Thank you. Well, I will try to give you um, to show you to show you of what inter uh, intermediality uh, means through the analysis of the uh, Osmos novel, uh, Nabokov's Osmos novel, the original of Laura. Well, uh, actually, this this is not really Nabokov's novel, but at least not only his novel, but also Dimitri, his song. And I will explain that. Uh, by the time of uh, Nabokov's death in 1977, he had written, he had finished a 138 index cards, uh, which were supposed to be the first draft of the, the novel. But he died. And more than 20 years later, his son Dimitri decided to publish those index cards in the form of this unconventional book. And I say unconventional book because it's formed by uh, these pages have in the upper part. Uh, they have uh, the, a photograph of the original index cards, and of in the index cards. And in the lower part, uh, there's a transcription of those index cards with a very small orthographic corrections and only very few uh, footnotes. But Dimitri's work was not only that of a simple transcriber of his father's index cards, but also he had to order those cards uh, due to the unfinished state of, of the work. There are many of them, at least one third of the index cards, that don't have any indexical information. So we don't really know if they belong to the, the end, the beginning of the book, uh, which chapter, etc. So Dimitri is offering us his reading of his father's ideas. And I would like to start showing you the, uh, the structure of the book. Uh, we, we start with an intro introduction by Dimitri, it's an 11 page introduction talking about his relationship with his father at the time, especially of the writing of the novel, and a lot of extra literary data about his biographical that we have uh, another page of acknowledgments, and we have <coughs> a note on the text where he Dimitri explains uh, his work transcribing uh, Nabokov's index cards, and it's very interesting. This uh, I'm, this line I'm, I'm gonna quote Dimitri: the photos of the cards that accompany the text are perforated and can be removed and rearranged as the author likely did when he was writing, writing the novel. This is going to be very important for the concept of in intermediality that we are going to talk about later. Uh, and then we have these index cards. But it's important that you have in mind that this book is not really Nauco, but also his songs. And if you are familiar with Nabokov's uh, work, this structure, index cards, novel, ambiguous structure. Uh, this will bring you to mind, Pale Fire. This is a Finnish novel by Nabokov from 1962. And it has a kind of similar structure. Uh, we have a foreword uh, by someone called Kimbo, who is interpreting 80 medium sized index cards that are that poet left before dying. And so we have later the poem by that John Shay, a commentary by the Kimboat again, which becomes a novel itself and an index of names and almost index. Well, the similarities, at least in the structure of both novels, is due to Nabokov's uh, autobiographical, always. Uh, details that are in his novels, and also the fact that he always wrote uh, the first drafts of his novels in index art. So we have a conscious decision by uh, Dimitri Nabokov to create an intertextual book through the, the, the tale fire, his father's uh, previous novel, when he is just publishing the book like this, with the index cards. Indeed, 
intertextuality and intermediality are uh, two concepts, very uh, uh, interconnected concepts. The same way intertextuality was defined in a broad and in a narrow sense, we can define intermediality the same way. And that's why I've chosen this def uh, definition by Grisha Koban Ryan, which says, in its broad sense, it is the medial, the intermediality is the medial equivalent of a broad intertextuality, and it covers any kind of relation between different media. In a narrow sense, it refers to the participation of more than one medium or sensory channel in a given world. Well, we are going to use that second definition, the narrow definition, to analyze especially this unconventional uh, book. There is a, another author that develops this second narrow definition, uh, a critic, uh, her name is uh, Alison Gibbons, and she works with the concept of multimodality. She tries to uh, mix this, this question of the medium, the technological, the physical material medium, with the way in which human beings, we process and we understand uh, information. This is the definition that she uh, uses. Thus, the term multimodal suggests both medial forms as well as sensory modality, enabling the medial and the modal to be connected to the ways in which human subjects perceive and interact with intermediality. And then she develops this and she offers us uh, some features of the multimodal novel. And that novel that uses uh, intermediality, multimodality. Let's gonna check. Let's check uh, if this uh, the original work fulfills those uh, conditions. We have first unusual textual layouts and page design. Absolutely, we have the index cards and we have the transcriptions. Very different. Uh, varied typography. Yeah, we have on the one side we have the printed letters with different uh, letter font sizes and the introduction is a regular one in the index in the transcription the, the size is smaller but we also have the handwriting when we <coughs> when we read the index cards and we see Nabokov's uh, handwriting we see that it's not regular it changes all the time and that irregularity of the handwriting is uh, provoking, is producing an effect on the reader. We have use of color in, in type and majestic content. Well, uh, the color is only the book has a uh, grayish uh, in the background, in the paper, uh, against the white in the introduction. Concrete realization of text to create images as in concrete poetry, not really. Uh, the index card, the words, forms, patterns, blocks. Uh, but not really to create images. Devices, this is important, uh, devices that draw attention to the text materiality, including metafictive writing. We have, every time we read uh, the handwritten index card, we are, especially because the, the handwriting is irregular, we think about the author writing that, we think about the, what how he feels when he is writing that, because the, there are many things. There are uh, blood smudges, the, the strength of the stroke is, is different. So it's going to attract, to draw to the materiality of the text instead of the content. We are going to focus more on the iconic uh, representation, iconic value of the text, more than in the symbolic a representation or the content of the text. Also, as for the metafictive writing, it's interesting that the main actor, the main character in the in the novel, named Philip Wilde, has many things in common with uh, Nabokov himself, including his medical condition. So, because Dimitri told us that in the introduction, so every time we read these handwritten uh, index cards, and we are aware of uh, Nabokov's handwriting, we are going to think about the author, not only the content, not only Philip Wilde's character, but Philip Wilde as a possible Nabokov, as author. 
And that's gonna be that's gonna work through that the handwriting of the uh, index cards in the footnotes. We have uh, Dimitri's footnotes. We have three book sections. In some of uh, Nabokov's notes, uh, index cards, we have notes written by him virtually. So we have to rotate the, when we are reading. We have to rotate the book to be able to to read an index card. That creates a, a strange connection the reader and, and the text itself. We have, well, mixing of genres in literary terms and in terms of visual effect. Well, we have, we have the visual effect, if not the, the literary, uh, uh, in literary terms. Here we have an example of four of the index cards by Nabokov. We can see that uh, in one of them, we see that the vertical configuration of his writing, which is going to make us Rotate the book to be able to read it. We see the irregularity of the writing. For example, in the lower left uh, index card, it's really illegible. It, we cannot really interpret well what, what is written. So it's going to draw the attention to the text more than to the content. Also, the strength of the stroke, the indexical signs in two of the index cards, but not in the, in the other two. So here we have a little bit. Well, uh, to wrap up a little bit uh, uh, what I've commented so far, I would say that intermediality in this book is contained uh, in the original and in of Laura, at least in at two different levels. One of them is the handwriting. Well, I'm not going to uh, read this the Poisoner uh, line, but basically it says that every person, every writer, has a personal style of handwriting. And it, it's showing a lot about his personality. Not only his personality, but also his state of mind. With Nabokov, it's especially important because, they, or because of the irregularity of his handwriting, and also the, the fact that he was, he was dying at the time of writing this book. And there's going to be a connection between his own dying and the dying of one of the characters of the book. It's the, the most important index card is the last one, at least the, the one that Dimitri tells us that is the last one, which is this one. We have here an index card with only seven words, all of them are verbs. They say efface, expunge, erase, delete, grab out, wipe out, obliterate. All of them have to be with dying, with vanishing, with eliminating. And it's interesting because the, the, the page is almost blank. There are only seven words. It's as if the text was vanishing little by little. And there is that connection with the character, Philip White, who is also vanishing, who is trying to kill himself because he's dying. And at the same time, we can think of the author, Nabokov, dying himself. And all of that, those three levels, come to us also, especially through the, this index card, the, 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 that mixing of the text with the content, the form and the content. The other level at which intermediality can be expressed is the structure. Well, as I told you, uh, it's an unfinished work, and uh, the structure, the, the many narrative layers are embedded, but we don't know how. We don't know uh, how Nabokov would have finished embedding all of that uh, novel if he had lived enough to, to finish the novel. So we have different possibilities. This is just, these are four possibilities that I'm giving you. But there are more, uh, at least, because we have three, we have three, three main characters, we have Phil, uh, Philip Wilde, we have uh, his wife, uh, Flora, and we have Flora's lover, Eric. Eric and Philip White, the two of them are writing books themselves. And those books are inside Nabokov's narrative. We don't know which one contains the other. So we just guess. We, we can just guess. Dimitri was pretty aware of that, and he decided to uh, offer the reader the possibility to rearrange, to order the reader himself as I showed you in the, in the note uh, at the beginning, the, again, the, the structure of this book. 
It is, for example, this is a, a cheap a soft cover uh, edition of the book, but in the, in the hard cover uh, editions, you can virtually just detach the index cards and just form, try to establish a structure yourself. And it's strange, it becomes a different thing. It's not only a, a novel, it's just, it can be a jigsaw puzzle that affects the structure, affects the content, affects many things. And before finishing, I will, I will talk about the embodiment of the text. And I will try to connect this with metamorphosis, which is the other uh, theme of, the, of this uh, talk. Well, we'll start at, uh, quoting Sisley when, when he uh, comments uh, Peter Greenaway's The Pillow Book, the movie of P uh, Pillow Book. And he says that linking flesh and text questions dominant interpretational habits in literary and cultural theory of treating the text as a disembodied entity. We traditionally consider text and ourselves as different, but, well, there are some cases where it's intertwined, it's interwoven. And in Nabokov's novel's content, we have two examples. I'm gonna read both of them. First one, a sweet Japanese girl who took Russian and French taught Flora to paint her left hand up to the radial artery, one of the tenderest areas of her beauty with minuscule information. The names of modern French writers and their listing on Flora's palm cost a much denser tickle. It's interesting that here now Flora is writing on her own hand, on her skin. Now her skin becomes medium of the text, it becomes the text itself. So just we can connect this with the previews, with the last index card that it's connecting the text vanishing and also the characters uh, disappear, disappearance and also the author dying. And in the, in the next uh, line, uh, it says, her exquisite bone structure immediately slipped into a novel became in fact the secret structure of that novel beside uh, supporting a number of poems. Here we have Flora with, his, with her lover, Eric, and Eric is metaphorically producing a metamorphosis with uh, his lover's shape, with her, his lover's body. It's making of that body uh, a novel, the structure of a novel. So we have here two different levels, the handwriting on the text of Flora. So her own body becomes text, or medium for the text. And also, in this case, the Flora, as a lover for Eric, becomes the structure of a novel. We have a metamorphosis. The text is becoming, the body is becoming text. There is a connection between both of them. If we connect this with that last, uh, that final, the Nabokov's index card with those seven word, uh, verbs, we kind of understand that relation between the vanishing of the text, which also is a metaphor for the vanishing of the character, Philip Wilde, that also refers to the dying author, who is Nabokov. All of this, all of these things, this metamorphosis between text and body is achieved thanks to this book, the way this book is uh, published, has been published by Dmitry Nabokov, and to that concept of intermediality.